What's up, dreamers? It's your girl, Carla. It's your boy, Mo. Here from the Dreamer family. What is up? What is up? What are you guys doing today? What are you saying? We've got an incredible story to share with you today. It's a true story. Happened to a friend of a friend of ours. And let me tell you, it's a story that will inspire you, motivate you, and teach you some powerful lessons that can be linked back to some of the world's greatest and most transformative books. In case you guys don't know this or if this is your first time on our channel, just a quick little recap. We've traveled the world for the past 10 years in search of the most inspiring and greatest stories out there. And this one, today's, uh, is truly something special. So get ready to be captivated, inspired, and to learn some valuable lessons that will stay with you long after this video ends, my friends. Now you guys know the drill. If you like what you see, smash that like button, mm -hmm. subscribe to our channel, Easy. and definitely leave a comment below. And if you found value in today's video, mm -hmm. do me a solid and share it with just one other person. Just share it, just share sure. this video. Yeah. Let's spread the love and inspiration one story at a time. Mm -hmm. Share it with someone that you think can actually benefit from this video. Yeah, man. That's all we ask Let's for, do there's it. no fee. One, That's it. just one share. And you're helping somebody at the same time. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> hey, yo, yeah, man. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Let's begin the story. The story is about some dude Sorry, called Rotilius. Do we clap every time? No. Yeah. All right, let's go. What do you mean clap? Clap to get back the sound. Or no, it's, cause it's, no, it's just once, I think. I think once is good enough. Okay, okay. So this story is about this guy named Rutilius. Rutilius. I think We're that's cool how you name. say it. I know. Cool name. Big time. I think I think it's pronounced Rutilius or Rotilius. Rutilius. Whatever you Rutilius. want. Rutilius. So Rutilius had always... This is, so this is how it was told to me. Okay, I'm going to go based off of memory here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, just go with me here. But essentially, Rutilius had always been a curious man. From a young age, he had a deep-seated desire to know the answers to life's biggest questions. He had always been fascinated by the ancient world and its secrets, which is why he found himself in Egypt studying the hero hieroglyphs. Hieroglyphics. Hiero I think it's hiero. I say hiero hero. Hier hieroglyphics. Hero, Guys, let know. us know in the comments below how do you pronounce this? Is it hero or hiero? <laughs> I'm gonna say hero. I think it's hiero. Hieroglyphics. Hiero hier hieroglyphics. I think in French it's like something like that. Anyways, yeah, he was I studying know. the hieroglyphics <laughs> and the structures of a civilization <laughs> okay. long gone. Long gone. Yeah, the Egyptians is pretty interesting. Yeah, man. man. I don't think they taught us everything about the Egyptians, no. but I I mean that's a whole other story. Whole oh other man. Story. Well, no, Rutilius basically believed that the answers he sought were hidden somewhere in the sands of the desert. That there were clues he had to find in order to truly understand life's greatest secrets. Okay. So as he walked through the ancient ruins, he felt a sense of awe and wonder. The grandeur of the structures was overwhelming and the hieroglyphics on the walls seemed to whisper secrets to him. He spent days and nights deciphering the symbols, trying to make sense of the mysterious language of the past. One day, as he was exploring the ruins, as it's been told to me, he stumbled upon an old man. The man was sitting cross-legged on the ground, surrounded by books and scrolls. He had a long beard, and a wise look in his eyes. Excuse me, sir. Rutilia said. Do you know anything about the ancient hieroglyphics? The old man looked up and smiled. I know a thing or two about them, he said. But they are not what you should be focusing on. What do you mean? Rutilia asked, intrigued. There are bigger secrets in the world than the language of the past. The old man said. I can show you, but you must be willing to follow me. Rutilius didn't hesitate. He had come to Egypt in search of the truth. And if this old man had something to show him, he was willing to follow. The old man, as the story has been told, led Rutilius to a hidden temple deep in the desert. As they walked, the old man spoke about the nature of the universe. Everything in the world is in the state of constant vibration. The old man said, from the smallest subatomic particles to the largest stars in the galaxies, everything vibrates at a certain frequency. Rutilius was confused. What do you, uh, what does that have to do with anything? He asked. Sound, waves, and vibration are the building blocks of the universe. The old man said. They are what holds everything together. If 
you can understand the nature of vibrations, you can understand the universe itself. Bertilius was intrigued. He had never thought about the role of vibrations in the universe. It was a new concept for him, but he was eager to learn more. The old man then led him into the temple and pointed to a symbol on the wall. This is the clue you seek, he said. So Rutilius looked at the symbol. It was a simple drawing of a sound wave with peaks and valleys. What, what does this mean? Rutilius asked. It means that everything in the world is connected through vibration. The old man said. The sound wave is just one example of how vibration manifests themselves in the world. But vibrations are everywhere, in everything. They are the fundamental building blocks of the universe. Rutilius was astounded. He had never thought about the world in this way before. The old man's words had opened up a new way of seeing things. Is there more to this clue? Rutilius asked. Y yes, the old man said. But you must figure it out for yourself. The universe is full of clues, and they are all connected. Follow the path, and you will find the truth. And with that, the old man left Rutilius to ponder the clue. Rutilius spent the next few days meditating on the meaning of the sound wave symbol. He thought about the nature of vibrations and how they related to the universe. Rutilius' quest for the truth about life brought him to the city of Athens. So from Egypt, now we're going to Greece. So as you'll see from the story, he actually travels through two different main countries around the world. So here he's in Egypt and he meets this girl named Sophia, another wise woman who had spent many years studying the mysteries of the universe. Sophia agreed to help Rutilius in his quest and together they began to explore the concept of time. Time is a curious thing, Sophia said as she sat down with Rutilius in a small cafe. We think we understand it, but in truth, it is a mystery that has puzzled humanity for centuries. Rutilius nodded in agreement. I've always been fascinated by the concept of time, he said. I feel like there's something more to it than just the passing of seconds, minutes, and hours. Sophia smiled. You're right. Time is not just a simple linear progression. It is a complex and multifaceted concept that can be influenced by many different factors. Sophia then explained the experiment she had conducted to alter her perception of time. She had been inspired by J.W. Dunn's book, if you ever heard of it, it's called An Experiment with Time. And from that book, it inspired her to conduct this experiment, which, so in the book, it suggests that time may be a subjective experience that can be altered through certain techniques. So Sophia and Rutilius then set out to conduct their own experiment. They began by focusing on the sound of a ticking clock, trying to slow down their perception of time. They found that by doing this, they were able to make time seem to slow down, like literally. Wow. They also noted that their own heartbeats seemed to slow down as well. So next, they tried to speed up their perception of time by focusing on a spinning wheel. They found that this made time seem to speed up. This is fascinating, Rutilia said. It's like we are playing with the very fabrics of time itself. Sophia nodded. Indeed. But there's more to it than just slowing down or speeding up time. There are also time loops. She explained that events can seem to repeat themselves and that these time loops may be caused by our own perceptions of time. By altering our perception of time, we may be able to break free from these time loops. Rutilius was intrigued. So if we can alter our perception of time, does that mean that we could travel through time? Sophia smiled. The concept of time travel is a fascinating one, isn't it? Some believe that it may be possible through the use of certain techniques, such as meditation and altered states of consciousness. Rutilius was amazed by what he had learned. I never realized that time could be so complex, he said. It seems like the more we learn about it, the more mysterious it becomes. Sophia nodded. That's the nature of the universe. It is always revealing new mysteries and secrets. And the more we explore it, the more we realize how little we truly understand. Rutilius knew that there was still much more to learn on his journey, but he felt invigorated by the knowledge he had gained so far. He knew that his quest for the truth about life was far from over, but he was more determined than ever to continue on. Rutilius continued on his journey, pondering the insights he had gained from his previous clues in Egypt and Greece. He began walking around this new city, looking for more clues. What was the universe all about? Who was the creator? Was there one? 
Who is in control of our reality if we can alter the concept of time with our perceptions? All of these questions were racing through his head as he wandered through the small village he was visiting in India. Shortly after, he spotted an old man with a kind face sitting cross-legged on a mat and holding a strange instrument in his hands. He had a hunch that this man might know about his next clue. Excuse me, sir. Rutilia said, approaching the man. May I ask you what you're playing? This is a sitar, the old man said, smiling. It is an instrument used in the Indian classical music. Would you like to hear a tune? Rutilius nodded eagerly, and the old man began to play. As Rutilius listened to the intricate melodies and harmonies, he felt his mind begin to wander, and he was suddenly struck by a new insight. Excuse me, sir, he said, interrupting the old man's playing. May I ask you a question? Of course, my friend, the old man replied. Rutilius took a deep breath, trying to gather his thoughts. I have been searching for the truth about life, he began, and I have learned that consciousness plays a crucial role in our understanding of the world, but I'm still struggling to understand the nature of consciousness itself. Can you help me? The old man smiled, his eyes sparkling with understanding. Consciousness is a complex and multifaceted thing, he said, but I believe that it can be understood in terms of both quantity and quality. Rutilius furrowed his brow, intrigued. What do you mean by that? Well, the old man began. Quantity of consciousness refers to the amount of information that we are able to process at any given time. Our brains and nervous system are constantly processing information. And the more information we are able to process, the greater our capacity of consciousness. Rutilius nodded, beginning to see where the old man was going with this. And what about the quality of consciousness? He asked. Quality of consciousness refers to the level of awareness and understanding that we are able to achieve. The old man explained. It is not enough to be simply processing information. We must be able to sense the information and use it to gain a deeper understanding of the world. Rutilius was impressed by the old man's insights and he began to see how they related to his own journey. How can we expand our capacity for information processing? He asked. The old man smiled knowingly. There are many ways to do this, he said. Meditating, for example, can help to quiet the mind and allow us to focus more deeply on the present moment. Breath work can also be used to expand our capacity for consciousness. By increasing the amount of oxygen and energy flowing through our bodies. Rutilius nodded taking in the old man's words. And what about altered state of consciousness? He asked. Can they also help us to understand the nature of consciousness? The old man smiled again, his eyes twinkling. Yes, indeed. He said. Altered state of consciousness can be achieved through a variety of means, and they can offer insight into the nature of reality. They are not accessible through normal waking consciousness. Through altered states of consciousness, we may be able to tap into the deeper understanding of the world and our place within it. Rutilius felt a sense of excitement growing within him as he realized that he was beginning to unravel some of the mysteries of consciousness. And what about the universe itself? He asked. Can we understand the universe through the study of consciousness? The old man nodded thoughtfully. Consciousness is a fundamental aspect of the universe. So after a few months exploring in India, it was time for Rutilius to head over to his next destination to find his next clue. So Rutilius continued his journey to, this time, China. Ooh, that's cool. So he went to China also. This yeah. guy's been everywhere. I know. It's, such, it's cool to like go on adventures because you just like go and yeah, you just discover, you just follow your heart. He marveled at the beauty of the natural world around him. Finally, after weeks of traveling, he arrived at a Taoist temple nested in the heart of the mountains. So there he met the wise sages who had devoted their lives to understanding the Tao and the principles of yin and yang. For months, Rutilius meditated and studied with the sages, learning the art of stillness and the balance between opposing forces. He found that the key to unlocking the mysteries of the universe was not in finding answers 
but in asking the right questions. During one of his quiet moments in the temple garden, he met a young boy who approached him and said, The answers you seek are not to be found in the external world, but within yourself. Rutilius was intrigued by the boy's words and asked him to explain further. The boy smiled and said, The nature of reality is subjective and depends on the observer's perspective. What you perceive as real is simply your interpretation of the world around you. Different beings perceive the world in different ways. For example, the, some animals see in different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum than humans, which means that their reality is different from ours. Rutilius was fascinated by the boy's words and asked him to elaborate. The boy went on to explain that the idea of relative realities is based on the principles of relativity, which suggests that space and time are not absolute, but are dependent on the observer's frame of reference. The world around us is not fixed and static, the boy said. It is constantly changing, and our perception of it changes as well. But the altered state of consciousness may allow us to perceive reality in a different way. Rutilius listened intently, captivated by the boy's words. The concept of relative realities has important implications for our understanding of spirituality and the nature of the self. The boy continued. Many spiritual traditions suggest that the self is an illusion. And this may be because the nature of reality is subjective and depends on the observer's perspective. By understanding this, we can free ourselves from the limitations of our own perspective and begin to see the world in a new way. After hearing this, Rutilius sat quietly, contemplating the boy's words. He realized that his journey had brought him to a deeper understanding of the universe and the interconnectedness of all things. The concept of relative realities had opened his eyes to a new way of seeing the world and he knew that he would never be the same again. Rutilius traveled now to Africa in search of wisdom, hoping to uncover more about the secrets of the universe. He spent weeks living with a tribe, learning about their traditions and beliefs. During his stay, he met a shaman who showed him a model of the universe that was unlike anything he had ever encountered. I want to meet a shaman. Yeah, that would be cool. Never been to Africa yet. Down to go. Soon. <laughs> the shaman explained okay. that everything in the universe was in a state of vibration and resonance and that these vibrations could be considered the building blocks of the universe. Rutilius was intrigued as this concept seemed to echo what he learned in Egypt, Greece and China from his previous clues. The shaman went on to explain that this model of the universe was based on the idea of a hollow movement Ooh. which is a term coined by physicist i think his name is david boom boom bomb maybe bomb i don't think it's bomb B -O -H -M or something. yeah bomb b-o-h-m bomb. 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 david boom bomb and so <laughs> shaman suggested that the hollow movement could be understood in terms of vibrations which propagated through space and time so as the shaman spoke as the story goes as has been told to me, Rutilius began to understand that everything in the universe could be thought of as vibrations, from the tiniest subatomic particles to the vastness of galaxies. He realized that these vibrations were all interconnected and created a complex dynamic system that was constantly evolving. The shaman also touched upon the idea that consciousness was a fundamental aspect of the universe and it was closely linked to the vibrations and resonance that underlie the universe. The shaman suggested that by understanding the nature of vibration and resonance, one could achieve a deeper understanding of the universe and their place within it. Rutilius listened intently as the shaman explained this model of the universe. He began to see the world around him in a new light and the idea of the hollow movement resonated deeply within him. He knew that this model would stay with him forever as it was something that would continue to reveal new insights and understandings about the nature of the universe. Rutilius had heard many stories about the ancient Inca civilization 
and he was eager to explore their ruins and learn their secrets. As he journeyed through the mountains and jungles of South America, he marveled, of course, at the breathtaking natural beauty of the land. After weeks of traveling, Rutilius finally arrived at the ruins of an ancient Inca city. As he explored the intricately carved stone structures, he couldn't help but feel a sense of awe at the ingenuity and skill of the ancient builders. One day, as he was wandering through the ruins, Rutilius met a group of indigenous people who were tending to their crops in a nearby field. He struck up a conversation with them and was surprised to find that they had a deep understanding of the land and its rhythms. Not just knowing about the secrets of the universe, one of them said. It's about living in harmony with the world around us. Rutilius so was intrigued by this idea and asked their group to teach him more about their ways. Over the course of the next few months, he lived among them, learning their traditions and beliefs. One day, as they were sitting around a campfire, one of the elders began to talk about the nature of intuitive knowledge. He explained that intuition is a form of direct knowing that comes from a deeper level of consciousness than our normal waking state. It is not something that can be learned from a book, the elder said. It is something that must be experienced and be cultivated over time. Rutilius was fascinated by this idea and asked the elder to teach him more about developing his intuitive abilities. The elder shared a number of practical techniques, including meditation and visualization, as well as the importance of cultivating an open and receptive mindset. Intuition is like a muscle, the elder said. The more you use it, the stronger it becomes. Rutilius began to practice these techniques and soon found that he was able to tap into a deeper level of consciousness. He began to see patterns and connections in the world around him that he had never noticed before, and he felt a sense of clarity and purpose that he had never experienced before either. As he continued to explore the ruins and learn from the indigenous people, Rutilius realized that the true meaning of life was not in discovering the secrets of the universe but in living in harmony with the world around us. He realized that by cultivating his intuition and learning to live in harmony with the land, he could gain a deeper understanding of the world and his place within it. As Rutilius walked along the shore, he felt a deep sense of disillusionment. He had traveled to the ends of the earth in search of the truth about life, and yet he still felt lost and uncertain. He sat down <laughs> on a rock and looked out at the sea, wondering if he would ever find the answers he was looking for. But then a thought occurred to him, and it was like a bolt of lightning struck his mind. The truth about life was not something that could be found in books or teachings, but rather something that was inside of him all along. He realized that the final truth about life was the knowledge of the creator, the force that brought the universe into existence and continues to guide its evolution. Rutilius reflected on the nature of the creator, wondering what it might be like. He thought about the different views people had about the creator and realized that they were all different ways of understanding the same underlying reality. Some people saw the creator as a personal God, while others saw it as a universal creative force. At the heart of all of these views was the idea that the universe was a manifestation of the creative impulse of the creator. He began to see the universe in a new light, realizing that everything in it was a reflection of the creator's creative power. He marveled at the beauty and complexity of the world around him, realizing that it was all a reflection of the creator's infinite creativity. He saw how the creator was intimately involved in the ongoing evolution of the universe, guiding its development and growth. So as he thought about the nature of the creator, Rutilius also began to see his own creative power. He realized that as a manifestation of the creator's creative impulse, he too had the potential to tap into his own creative power and contribute to the ongoing evolution of the universe. He felt a sense of joy and wonder at the thought of all the possibilities that lay ahead, knowing that he had the power to shape his own destiny and contribute to the ongoing growth and evolution of the universe. In the end, Rutilius realized that the final truth about life was not something that could be found outside of himself, but rather something that was inside him all along. He knew that as long as he stayed true to his own creative power and his connection to the creator, he would always find a way 
in the world. The end. So you tell me. What do you think? He didn't have to travel. Yeah, he didn't have to go anywhere. <laughs> this guy <laughs> traveled the world <laughs> to finally realize. But it's true. This is yeah, all true. But that's, what that's what's the, beautiful. Right? I'm just making a little joke out of it. But yeah. yeah, the truth is always within us. Literally. At first, he was like, it's not in a book. It's in this and it's not yeah. here. But now he's like, oh, it's not out there. It's in me. And it's cool how yeah. all these guys, different sages, different people, old elders from all over the world were pretty much telling him the same thing. Mm -hmm. And it's cool how it was all connected. It was all leading to yeah, like, the, next the next step. I mean, at least he got to travel. At least he got to see all these cool places. That's like, true. I'm down. Thanks for tuning in <laughs> to this incredible story. My friends, I hope you found it as inspiring as I did. All right, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, and leave a comment below. So, and hey, if you guys want to keep up with our adventures and all the amazing stories that we come across, make sure to follow us on Instagram. All of the links will definitely be below. Follow myself, Carla Maria Bruno, and Mozi, Mozi, as well as Auto Reel. So um, that's where I post a lot of my um, content creation that I create. Like I create different reels and stuff for different businesses locally. Also, we make lots of delicious cookies every single month. So make sure to follow. And then, of course, you'll be able to see um, some of our travel adventures while we travel the world. Speaking of amazing stories, uh, in our next video, yep. we'll be sharing a true story of uh, a group of optimistic and super determined group of friends. Mm -hmm. who come together to pursue their dreams and realize that the key to unlocking their full potential all right, lies within their own minds. Their own minds. It's pretty cool because this story here was he discovered yeah. everything was within him. Yeah, it sounds like a Rotilia story. Yeah. The next story is they realize that there's something up here. Something that we all the have mind. the power yeah. to control. Yeah. And, and from what I remember, with each small victory, mm -hmm. They inspire each other and those around them to embrace the power of a positive, uh, positive mindset. Love it, guys. Thanks again for watching, my friends. We love you all. And until the next time, keep chasing your dreams and make this world a better place. Peace. And we're here from the Dreamer family. We're here from the Dreamer family. Like, we are here. We are the Dreamer family. <laughs> we're here from. We're from Earth. Oh, wait. Yeah. What? Are we this from Earth? Is, I messed up. I, I don't think I'm from Earth. Let me do that again. Are you from Earth? Testing one, two, three. Yeah, it's working. Right. It's no, working. I don't know. I feel like this is my first time here. We'll see. This is my, definitely my last time because I ain't coming back. I know a thing or two. That's not the most I mean. Go, go. <laughs> chakras. Chakras. If you'd want to. I know a thing or two about them. The old man, okay. <laughs> <laughs> From the smallest subatomic particles. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go, go, do it again, do it again. <laughs> From the smallest. <laughs> manifest themselves. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, go, go. I don't know.